These two are passed out because they gallivanted all night last night. <laughs> Get me up. Yeah, I will wake you up. A bit sleepy this morning. I was up all night trying to catch a, a lion in the camp, but they didn't seem to have come. They're very close. They were no more than a kilometer away from the camp, roaring all night. But all I found was a bloody owl. We're off, uh, off now. I just wanted to run you through this campsite so you can see what I meant last night when we said we needed to get into... There was a line here! Bloody hell! Look at that! There's a line, fresh line track. See, they got over my tire marks. So, Liffy, there was a line here last night. Was there? Yeah. Anyway, the camp is... It's overgrown. I mean, we... we camp last night I'll show you it was right there so that's where we slept and that's the bush and you can tell that this is obviously a pathway for animals if you look in there and we're off this morning we're gonna see if we can find those lions quickly and then we're going to passage and then I'm gonna try and take a nap in the 40 degree heat a bit later otherwise I'm gonna meet that on my feet by the evening all right let's see how it goes today Growing up in Africa has probably been one of the coolest things I could have ever done, I think, in my life. When we first decided we wanted to do this trip, I never thought it would be as big as this, number one. But once we started committing and started doing our research, we figured, you know what, you might as well go big. So we quit our jobs, and now we're here, and it is just the best thing we could have done ever in our lives. I think two weeks in and you have already experienced so much that I wouldn't trade it for anything. Come here, come here, come here. <laughs> Watch out for snakes. <laughs> oh, it's the rare species of Australia. Is there anyone coming? No. <laughs> we'll figure out. to Passage Valley. After last night sleeping in the middle of well, what we thought was nowhere, we still were about 20 odd k's from the gate as the crow flies even though it's a 40 k drive. But today you can really tell we are alone. The closest person are about 40 kilometers um, from us, maybe, because we don't know if those campsites actually have people in them. It feels quite strange being so far from another human being. If you think about it, most of you watching while you're watching this video have someone 10 meters from you in the next house, the next room, whatever it might be. And even if you take everyone out of your suburb, the closest farmhouse or closest town next to you is no further than 40 kilometers. It is quite an odd feeling and especially seeing that there's no water, no cell phone reception, no internet, just us two and the bucky. It's quite strange. So we just got to Passage camp number two. It's 11 o'clock in the morning and it's 40 degrees outside and there's two birds are literally they're panting I've never seen a bird pant and it's gonna give this some water <laughs> just step back a little bit maybe look I love it he's coming he's like too. there's water here all of a sudden they're chatting to each mm. other 
while the birds are having their drink of water, I'll run you through the campsite. This is much better than the one we stayed at last night. The shower and long drop, so normal, and then there's two nice trees. And then we have a, a special bit of furniture at this camp. This, ladies and gentlemen, is why you drive a Toyota. Right there. He's been left for dead. But hey, hey, wait, no, the guy locked the door. Yeah, actually, maybe it's not that long. I think this might, might have been the, the service bucky because the showers for the campsites are all on the back here. But maybe. The guy got eaten by a lion. Oh. Trusty old landy, they say. So we <coughs> are gonna have lunch here, and then we're gonna maybe decide whether we're just gonna go to Corey and take a chance. Hopefully one of the campsites there will be open, because we don't actually want to stay here tonight. Um, Deception Valley in Corey apparently is much better for game viewing, so we want to try and head that way to see if we can can get a campsite open there. It is hot. Hey, love. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> Lunch and a cold one before 12. <laughs> the, the heat dictates when you're allowed to have a cold one, not the time. left me. I knew this was how she would kill me one day. Leave me in the middle of a pan. Amongst the lions. How much for a lift? How much you got? I got myself dropped off here by some woman. What a bitch. <laughs> you can't say that on camera. We are in the middle of Deception pan by ourselves. We haven't seen anyone for two days now. There's, uh, we've been to basically all the campsites on the way here and around uh, Matopi's side. No one here. No one here. There's like there's probably the only people in this entire park, which means we're about 100 k's away from civilization from anyone else. Mm. It is so quiet. It's just. It's so quiet, it's deafening. And there's a fly. No, no, I heard something. I'm not really dead. <laughs> yes. So we just arrived back into camp about 45 minutes ago. We've got a fire going. Um, we got unpacked quickly, hang the washing. Um, and now I am getting ready to make us a delicious poiki tonight. It's my turn to cook and I'm making traditional cast iron dish. We've got some uh, delicious oxtail which is we're going to put in tonight. We've got a really nice wine that was left over, a little, half a bottle left over that we didn't finish the other night that we're putting in there. And we've got the onions and the garlic cooking in the fire. Uh, Nick is making us some... What are you making, love? Roosterkook. Making some rooster cook, which is uh, essentially like a type of dough that you cook on the fire. Hey, Liv. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it'll turn out, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. excited for poiking? Very excited. Good day of drying? Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Very good. Alrighty. I'm going to put the meat in quickly and then 
Relax. The meat is in. Look at those beautiful pieces of oxtail in the red wine. We're just going to seal them a bit and then we're going to close the lid. Uh, Nick mentioned to me today people are going to wonder how I always wear the same clothes every day. Why not have clean ones? Well, uh, a nice little overlanders tip that a good friend of ours, Saro, gave me. You uh, use one of these. It's just a, a, a buoyancy um, safety bottle that you use on a boat. We basically just put it on the back. A little bit of washing detergent, some water in there, throw the clothes in there while you drive around. That thing shakes like no front loader, top load, whatever, best washing machine. Nothing comes close to how good that washes. And then when we get to camp, we rinse the clothes quickly in some water and then we hang them and then the next day I get to get to wear the same shirt again and that's how we do it. Nick doesn't really like wearing the same clothes every day but I love these shirts, they're comfortable, I don't have to pack a lot of clothes because space is always an issue um, when, you, when you're doing overlanding, especially when you're doing such a big trip as we are where we're going to different countries, you need different types of clothes for Mozambique, for the beach, for uh, in the bush, for in the town, for wherever you want to go, then space becomes a bit difficult. So that's a, that's a great little tip. Uh, I'm gonna go just give this boy here a bit of a stir, put the rest of the secret ingredients in and then close the lid and wait for the meat to cook while I have a few cold brewskis. Oh, look at that. Looking gorgeously. What a nice little job. Seeing that way, yeah, let me show you what the showers look like in here. So you have to boil your own water, but there is a shower with a tap on it in there. So you put the water in and then you have a nice enclosed shower. Very nice. But we have a shower at home, we don't have to boil water, we just shower behind the bucket. Water's already warm. I mean, looked at all the other camps in the area, Deception, Deception's camps, and what's the other camps we looked at? Deception, Bassage, uh, and the quarry, the other quarry sites. Deception's really nice. It's uh, it's more, there's quite a lot of trees around, lots of shade. Quarry is quite nice and open, uh, as you can see. So you've got a view of the plains. You've got a nice view around you of, of everything. So it's quite easy to, easy to spot animals at night, which is quite nice. Where before we were quite enclosed, so you couldn't really see much. The only problem with this specific one is look at the size of the holes that these ground squirrels have dug. They are just massive. So half the campsite are full of them by now. But hey, I guess that's part of being in Africa. Go. Next time on Crikey Africa. Africa. <laughs> we have some visitors in camp. A moose. And a bird eats an entire zebra. Oh, 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 o